I'm Marshall Holman, and welcome to Maximum Bowling. I'm here today with John Jowdy, and we're going to show you how to maximize your bowling through a five-step technique that really works. At the beginning of the tape, we suggest you fully rewind the tape and set your VCR index counter to zero. This way, you can jot down your own VCR's index number for any portion of the tape you may want to review later. John, how about telling us a little about what we're going to go through today? Marshall, what we'd really like to do is concentrate on five specific areas that will really maximize your bowling. One, the rhythm and free arm swing, beginning with the push away and coordinating all the movements through the release. Next, we're going to deal with the slide and delivery to allow maximum leverage and balance. Three, we're going to look at the proper hand position to generate maximum power and revolutions on the ball. Four, we'll be analyzing the release point and the release angle. The timing is really important here, and we'll be looking at the techniques to make it happen right. Finally, the follow-through that's straight towards the target and extended to full length. For each step, we'll be breaking down the techniques for clear demonstration then we'll put it all back together again for the whole picture. Well, Marshall, did I leave anything out? I think that about covers it. But if you see anything you want to comment on or emphasize, please feel free to jump in at any time. You got it. All right, John, let's go bowling. Marshall, we uh, both agree that rhythm and a free arm swing are very essential to proper execution. Now, how do you prepare for this? John, what I'm going to try and do here is release the tension in my arm. I want to feel a good pendulum swing as I throw the ball, and when the ball is released, I want to keep my eye on that mark till well after the ball is by the mark. I also want to feel as if I had a glass of water on my head. I could make the whole delivery without spilling a drop, keeping my head and shoulders very much stationary. Let me show you what I mean. Let's look at that again. Now notice the freedom from the shoulder as the arm comes through. Now right there, right there, you accelerate the swing. Now acceleration meaning from hand to shoulder, not from forearm. The arm goes back free. It's coming down free. The acceleration starts right there. This is where I accelerate the downswing from my hand through my shoulder out onto the lane without forcing it through my forearm. It's very important to keep it just a nice loose swing. You build a tension in the arm swing, and the pins are going to end up feeling it. You're going to, if you, even if you do hit the pocket, you're going to be leaving a lot more corner pins. That loose swing, that's what gives you carry.
Now we will watch each part of the rhythm and free arm swing in stop action. The arm is back free. The arm comes down free. Start your acceleration toward the bottom of your downswing. Build the acceleration from the hand through the shoulder and accelerate out onto the lane. Let's review once more the important points of the rhythm and free arm swing. Remember to keep the arm free of the body, releasing all the tension in the forearm and then accelerate towards the bottom of your swing. Build that acceleration from your hand through your shoulder and out onto the lane. Now, Marshall, we know that a proper slide is very essential in good execution. Uh, why don't you show us now how to slide properly? All right, John. What I, first of all, what I want to do when I get into that slide is make sure that I've got the slide going in or at least right with that fourth step. I want to make sure that I don't get my slide outside because if that happens, you're going to lose the leverage, the accuracy. You want to make sure you get it tight. You want that ball to almost touch the ankle just missing it to get the maximum leverage. I also want to make sure that the, that the trailing leg stays on the floor. The toes are on the floor. That'll keep you from lunging. And that'll also get you out of position. Now let me show you what it's supposed to look like. All right, let's take one more look at that. Let's focus on the fourth step now. The sliding step will go right in front of it. Right there, it keeps it in tight with maximum power on the ball. You'll also notice that I keep my right foot on the floor, which keeps me from lunging forward. I also want you to notice that the slide stays perpendicular with the foul line. That slide's going right towards my target, right there. Now in the stop action sequence, we will see each part of the slide. Start your slide with the last step. This keeps the slide tight. Keep the trailing foot on the floor. Slide must be perpendicular to the foul line. Sliding foot aims toward target. Let's review the important points in the slide. Remember to use the power from your next to the last step to start your slide. Keep the slide tight as the ball swings through, almost touching the ankle. 
The trailing foot stays on the floor to prevent lunging. You finish the slide perpendicular to the foul line, aiming toward the target. Now, Marshall, the key to a real power delivery uh, is the hand position. Now, what do you focus on when you want to accomplish this? Well, John, in order to generate the power and lift on the ball, you must keep the hand underneath the ball until the point of release. At the point of the release, the thumb will clear with the fingers still staying in the ball and turning in a natural motion. And it's very important to project the ball down the lane with a good power position. Now, there are a few things that I can concentrate on and I can tell you in order to give you some keys in order to do this properly. There are three basic ways of working this. Number one, tucking in the armpit, trying to keep that arm close to your body. Number two, keying with the elbow inside, once again trying to stay directly next to your body releasing the ball. But the third one, and the one that really works well for me, is leading with my ring finger. When I lead with the ring finger, it makes me do the others without even thinking about it. Keeps it in very tight. It seems to work the best for me, and I think it'll work for you too. And let me show you right now. All right, let's take a look at that again, John. Okay, as you can see right in here, I'm keeping that elbow in, leading with the ring finger, coming through the shot. My hand comes around in a natural motion. Nothing is forced. Everything is just a flowing motion. Once again, you'll see it from a little different angle, but it's the same kind of shot. You don't want to fly that elbow out. You want to keep it tucked in, come right through the ball. The key is not to force it. Just let the shot happen. Now watch the ring finger. It's leading, it's keeping the elbow in. He's under the ball right there. The ring finger is leading. The hand is under the ball. The elbow is tucked in, and you're right on line. In our stop action sequence, we will watch in detail the hand position. The hand must be kept under the ball till release for maximum power and lift. One method is to tuck the arm into the side. Or you can keep the elbow in towards the waist. The best is to lead with the ring finger. 
the thumb clears the ball first and the fingers will release and rotate in a natural motion. In review, your hand must be kept under the ball until the release point to generate maximum power and lift. One method is to tuck the arm in, or keep the elbow close to the waist, or third, lead with your ring finger. Each will help you keep your hand under the ball until the release. Now, Marshall, we've established the real proper hand release. But we have to take advantage of that by focusing on the release point and the release angle. Why don't you show us how it should be done? All right, John. First, I'm going to take you up to the front, up to the foul line, and show you exactly where the ball should be coming through. You want it released from here to here. If you get it up in here, you've got that swing is, is much, much too early and you have, to, you have to hit up on the ball, it's gonna send the ball offline. If it's back in here, now your arm is late. You gotta rush that arm back through. You're gonna be in all sorts of trouble. If you don't hurry the swing, you're gonna be light, and if you do hurry the swing, you're gonna be heavy. Now let me give you a couple of tips on how you can combat both of these problems. If you're early, from a standard position, and most bowlers start in a standard position something like this, from this position, if you move up on the approach just a little bit, you can shorten these steps, you're going to be able to get the ball at the proper release point. Another thing you can do is take the ball and lower it a little bit, and when you take your first step, then push it up. That's also going to slow it down. It's going to make it get just to the right point, again, for the perfect release. Now, if you're having the opposite problem, if your swing is a little bit late, you can move back a little bit on the approach and just do the opposite of what I said just a second ago. It really sounds complicated, but if you take these two easy little tips, you can fix that release point problem. Okay, we have the release point now, Marshall. What about the release angle? Okay, John, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show exactly what we mean about the release angle. We don't want that release angle dropping the ball behind us, and we don't want that release angle lifting the ball up or hitting up on the ball out of the lane. We want to do it as if we're trying to land a plane. What a nice smooth release, a nice smooth landing. Well, that was too Let's look at that one more time. Notice the projection of the ball. It's not going to go up and it's not going to go down. It's going to go out on a level plane, minimizing bounce and keeping all the power in the ball right on line. You see it from this angle also. Notice that the ball goes out and not up. You hit out on the ball. Perfect. This angle clearly demonstrates the effectiveness of a low, long release, where you get the ball out on the lane with minimum bounce. All right, from the back view, you can see as I'm going through my approach, when I release the ball, it's as if I'm landing that plane. I want very little bounce. I want the ball to skid through the first 15 to 20 feet of the lane before it picks up the roll. When it gets to the pins, I want that maximum power.
Let's look at each part of the release point and release angle in stop action. The proper release point can be mastered by moving up on approach. Or lower the ball and push out on the first step. This will slow your approach for release. To arrive at the proper release angle. Will result in a smooth release like landing a plane. In reviewing of the release point and release angle, you can step closer to the foul line which creates shorter steps, or lower the ball before you start then push out on your first step. Both of these methods will get the ball at the proper release point. The release angle is projected from a position on the floor and is a continuation of the release point. All right, we've seen the right way. I'm going to show you the wrong way. One of the biggest problems for some of the best bowlers in the country, they get in the habit of lifting up on the ball. They get the ball too far out in front of them before releasing it. Let me show you what I mean. You don't want that to happen. You don't want that to happen. Don't lift up on the ball. All right, everything looks fine up to this point. The shot is going well. But right in here. I came off the shot. I lifted up on the ball, not out. Now John, what do you think I could do to correct this? It just right at the very end, I just didn't stay with it. Well, you had your hand out in front. When you get your hand out in front, there's no way to go but up. And that's what causes the early hook and the uh, bad leaves. Way out there. See where your hand is? Way out front. No good. Oh, good. The ball's hooking early. Watch. Right into the nose. That's why it's imperative. You've got to keep the hand low, and you've got to release it at your ankle point. You can't get beyond your foot. In this freeze frame, we see a major flaw. Marshall's hand is way out in front of his toe. This is a result of an early swing, which causes you to hit up on the ball. The correct way is to release it from the ankle point, like this. Correct, incorrect, correct, incorrect. Now, Marshall, we've covered the first four points. Why don't you demonstrate the ideal follow-through this time? All right, John. The ideal follow-through is going straight at your target, extended to its full length. The arm will go right up the side of the face, not left, not right, right up the side of the face to give you that full target. Let me show you what I mean.
That was a good follow through. All right, now in this swing, we're gonna show the proper follow through. I take the ball back very easily. I bring it down right by my ankle, straight by my face. And now I let the follow through sort of fall down to my side again. That's my method. If you want, you can take the follow through and hold it after the ball is well past the arrows. Some people like to do that. Both methods are correct. It really doesn't matter. Whichever feels more natural for you. There you see once again the follow through. I let it go down to my side. One of the best things to remember in a real good follow through is to try to direct your hand out towards the pin. This will prevent hitting up on the ball, stopping overreaction. You'll get a nice flow through the ball and that will achieve maximum power. Looking at our stop action sequence, we will see each part of the proper follow through. Aim body straight at pins. Direct the ball out toward the pins. This will prevent hitting up on the ball. This will give good flow through the ball. The arm extends up the side of the face. In reviewing the proper follow through, remember to set up to aim the ball toward the pins and direct the ball out to the pins on the release. This will prevent hitting up on the ball and stop overreaction. This will give you a good flow through the ball as the arm continues up the side of the face. Well, that's about it for now. Keep reviewing these five techniques to maximize your bowling. I know your game will improve and you'll have a lot of fun doing it. Now we're going to show you a series of scenes for you to keep in your mind while you're practicing out of the lanes. 